So what's going on guys, it's JM at Sweetboxing. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel before you click onto any of my videos. Also comment below in the comment section if you guys have any opinions on what I'm saying in any of my videos. Like always, it is appreciated if you guys could drop me a quick sub or two on my channel. So, Eddie Hearn, the promoter of heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua, says that Anthony Joshua's next three fights should be Vladimir Klitschko, the rematch, a fight between WBC heavyweight champion John A. Wilder and former unified heavyweight champion Tyson Fury in a British world title showdown if Anthony Joshua beats Vladimir Klitschko and John A. Wilder before that. And I think Eddie Hearn is really pushing for this rematch with Vladimir Klitschko. It's like Eddie Hearn knows something we don't. It's like he thinks Vladimir Klitschko will take this fight and he's very confident he will be because I don't think he'd be pushing for it the way he is and messing about with trying to sort the titles out, about trying to get a step aside for Anthony Joshua so he doesn't have to fight his manager yet, Kubat Pulev. So I think Eddie Hearn knows that Vladimir Klitschko is going to take this rematch. Obviously, he talks on a regular basis to Bert Bonte, the manager of Vladimir Klitschko. So it's like Eddie Hearn knows something we don't yet. But I think this rematch will be very good for boxing. A lot of people are saying, yeah, but Anthony Joshua beat him. What else do they need to do? But yeah, Anthony Joshua did beat him. He did stop Vladimir Klitschko. It was a very emphatic win for Anthony Joshua. But before that stoppage, it was a fight where Anthony Joshua could have lost very easily. Because he was knocked down in the sixth round, he was very hurt, and he was out on his feet basically. And all Vladimir Klitschko really needed to do was land one or two more big clean shots. Then I think Anthony Joshua would have been finished. And Vladimir Klitschko will be kicking himself about that. And he does have a rematch clause in his contract. He can activate it at any time. And I think Eddie Hearn knows that he's going to activate it. And I think now Eddie Hearn knows. What the two fighters can do in the ring, he's desperate to put on the second fight. Because if it was a bit of a snooze fest where both men box each other for 12 rounds and Anthony Joshua um, squeak the 12 round unanimous decision, I don't think Eddie Hearn would be too quick to want this rematch with Vladimir Klitschko if it was similar to the Tyson Fury fight, which was a bit dull and stuff like that. But because the fight was so exciting and the way it captured the public and stuff like that, all the build up before the fight. And then when the fight got going and caught fire, like, it was just a crazy fight. It was probably one of the best heavyweight fights we've seen in the past 30, 20, 30 years. The way that both men showed a lot of heart in the fight. I think this was the first fight Vladimir Klitschko had shown any major heart. Even though he lost the fight, I think it was one of the best performances of Vladimir Klitschko's career. And Anthony Joshua, the way he managed to get up and survive and rally on late to get the victory was something really special from Anthony Joshua because a lot of people questioned his heart in that fight and he showed he had a lot of it that night and he went on to prove that he is the new guy in the division. So we've got this sticky situation with the IBF though. Obviously Eddie Hearn's going to need to sort it out with Kubrat Pulev's promoter Kali Sowland who Eddie Hearn does regular business with and I think they'll be able to come up with something but the IBF are a very strict organisation and I see a lot of people saying that Anthony Joshua should be stripped just like Tyson Fury was stripped because Tyson Fury was right to be stripped in my opinion. Like a lot of people are saying, oh, he got stripped or oh, it weren't fair. He was right to be stripped because he put a rematch clause in the contract. He didn't have to put the rematch clause in the contract. He was mandatory to fight Vladimir Klitschko. He was mandatory for one of Vladimir Klitschko's titles. He didn't have to to put a rematch clause in the contract. Like, he didn't have to agree to it, but he did, and he couldn't defend the IBF title against Glaskov, I think it was. Yeah, it was against that Ukrainian fighter, Glaskov. So the IBF stripped him. And I think people are right in saying Anthony Joshua should be stripped as well. But because Anthony Joshua is such a big draw, and he has a lot of money behind him, I think Eddie Hearn... Is going to try and sort something out and get it done here. So Anthony Joshua manages to keep both his titles. And yeah, you've got Eddie Hearn also talking about if he manages to defeat Vladimir Klitschko. Because it's not a given because Vladimir Klitschko nearly had him out in the first fight. So the rematch, who says that Vladimir Klitschko can't get the win in the rematch? But a lot of people will be favouring Anthony Joshua. So on to the next. 
If Anthony Joshua defeats Vladimir Klitschko, you've got WBC heavyweight champion John A. Wilder waiting and licking his lips to get in the ring with Anthony Joshua. He was there live working for Sky Sports when Anthony Joshua fought Vladimir Klitschko and he saw the crowd and you could just tell John A. Wilder had never seen anything like this in his life. And he was you could just tell he was thinking to himself, I want to be here. I should be having this. I'm a world champion. I'm undefeated. I've had 37 fights with 36 knockouts. I should be here. And he's desperate to get in the ring with Anthony Joshua. He's called out Anthony Joshua many times since the Vladimir Klitschko fight. And that's a really dangerous fight for Anthony Joshua. But there's one thing about John A. Wilder. He's not as technically gifted as Vladimir Klitschko at all. So I think that fight will be a bit of a shootout. But you've got John A. Wilder who's a lot lighter on his feet than Anthony Joshua. He's more athletic. He's got them long arms with that big right hand with so much power in it. That that right hand, when it lands, any heavyweight in the world in trouble. I'm telling you now. If John A. Wilder lands clean with that big right hand, then anyone's in trouble. And that's a really dangerous fight for Anthony Joshua. It's a f fight he could win. Like, I think he could win that fight. Anthony Joshua, no problem. But it's the danger of the fight because John A. Wilder is dangerous. Like I could think John A. Wilder could win that fight easily. Like, it's just such a shootout, in my opinion. And then, if Anthony Joshua manages to come through all of that, according to Eddie Hearn, then he wants the Tyson Fury fight. And this could be the biggest fight of them all. Because Tyson Fury has his fan base. He's such a controversial character in the sport of boxing. And even though a lot of people shit on his performance against Vladimir Klitschko, people need to remember he was the first guy... To beat Vladimir Klitschko in 11 years. Yeah, we fought a totally different fight to Anthony Joshua. Yeah, it wasn't exciting. Yeah, it was very technical and stuff like that. It was a chess match. And a lot of people weren't happy by it. But he still got the win. He still went over to Germany, Vladimir Klitschko's backyard, where he was the champion for the past 10 years. And managed to beat him very well. Like, very convincingly. Uh, he was doing stuff like putting his arms behind his back and the way he was moving in the fight. He was just totally bamboozling Vladimir Klitschko. He managed to neutralise Vladimir Klitschko's power punches. Like He took a lot of Vladimir Klitschko's weapons away from him that night. And Vladimir Klitschko just couldn't do anything. I know a lot of people are saying, yeah, but Vladimir Klitschko wasn't as good in that fight against Tyson Fury than he was against Anthony Joshua. I'm telling you now, if Tyson Fury fought the way Anthony Joshua fought, then I'm telling you now, Anthony Josh, not Anthony Joshua, Vladimir Klitschko would have been tagging him all night long. It was just because Fiore is so good in the ring when he's using his brain and the way he can move and use his technical abilities and use his boxing skills that he just totally bamboozled Vladimir Klitschko and not the fact that Tyson Fury also is six foot nine and has a lot longer reach than Vladimir Klitschko. There was just so many things that Tyson Fury did well in that fight. And I know a lot of people don't give him his credit because the fight, yeah, it was dull. Like, would I rather watch the Anthony Joshua Vladimir Klitschko fight on loop or the Tyson Fury Vladimir Klitschko fight on loop? I'd watch the Anthony Joshua fight on loop because it was just such an exciting fight. Whereas the Vladimir Klitschko Tyson Fury fight, you won't really want to watch it again, but you could appreciate what Tyson Fury did in there and the way he managed to defeat Vladimir Klitschko the way he did. And I think the fight with Anthony Joshua could be massive. The Tyson Fury Anthony Joshua fight. Like we know what kind of character Tyson Fury is. He's been going at Anthony Joshua on social media for months and months. And the way he sells a fight. The way he manages to rile his opponents up and the way he can get a reaction out of people, Tyson Fury. Like, a lot of people don't like Tyson Fury at all. But even if you don't like him, you're going to watch him. And that's what sells for Tyson Fury. He's similar to a Floyd Mayweather in that retrospect. Because a lot of fans watch Floyd Mayweather fight because Floyd Mayweather was very smart. He fought on Cinco de Mayo weekend where there was a lot of Latino fans. He tended to fight... Latino fighters on Cinco de Mayo so a lot of Mexican and Latino people were coming to watch um, Floyd Mayweather lose and they were buying the pay-per-views just to watch 
Floyd Mayweather lose and he never did lose and he was a very smart guy in doing that and I think Tyson Fury is very similar the way he can just rile people up I think Tyson Fury is a more likeable character than Floyd Mayweather don't get me wrong but he does have his people who don't like him at all and will tune into fights to watch him lose and the majority of the people who were watching face Anthony Joshua if that fight have ever happens will be to watch him lose and I think that fight will be able to sell massive him and Anthony Joshua like you can't tell me that fight's not massive you can't tell me that fight don't sell a stadium out you don't tell me that fight does over don't do over a million pay-per-view buys because it does but obviously Tyson Fury's had a lot of problems we don't know when he's going to be back in the ring he's out in Marbella training at the minute trying to get the weight off him because he put a lot of weight up on him and he also has this UCAD hearing as well that's been holding his career back. The UCAD hearing, obviously, him and his cousin, Huey Fuhrer, are being investigated and are in court right now for doping allegations and we will hear Tyson Fury's fate very soon. But they keep pushing this back. They keep pushing the Tyson Fury, Huey Fury doping allegations. And, well, we don't know what's going to happen with Tyson Fury. Is he going to be suspended? What is the board going to do with Tyson Fury? And I think it really needs to be sorted out because if it was any other fighter, I think it would have been sorted out by now. And this UCAD hearing just keeps getting pushed back and pushed back while this guy's career is on hold. Yeah, don't get me wrong, Tyson Fury had a lot to do with his career being on hold. The way he was out doing drugs and stuff like that and damaging his body and stuff like that. But also this UCAD hearing looming over him must have really got into his mind as well because it just, it's kept him out of the ring. Even if he didn't have any of these personal problems and he was in shape, he would still not be able to fight because of this UCAD hearing. So I think that really needs to be sorted out soon because Tyson Fury looks like he's back in the gym. He looks like he's motivated to try and get back to fight Anthony Joshua. And I think UCAD need to be fair to that and just say what he's going to do with him. Is he going to be suspended? I hope he's not going to be suspended. Because I think UCAD would be taking away a very good fight between him and Anthony Joshua. And they'll be taking it away from the fights if they suspend Tyson Fury. Don't get me wrong. Like, I just don't know what's going on with this doping stuff. I don't know the ins and outs of the actual details about Tyson Fury. All I know is that it's doping and stuff like that. I don't know if he did it and stuff like that. Like, you just don't know. It's up to UCAD now. But I hope something gets resolved so we can see Tyson Fury back in the ring. And yeah, I'm going to start waffling on now because I've been waffling on for a while. Comment below in the comment section.